hi everyone in this video i'm going to show you how to implement a login with google account in your website this project is created in php and the source code for this project is in my website and i provide the link in the description my website here is this one and you can click in the source code here the I uploaded some files for the source code and this is a zip file for instance on this project this is the link for the source code and you have to remember to run compose and store in your project directory because I packed it with composer file configuration here a user may put password and email and may log in here but instead of implementing this login, we want to add another authentication algorithm that is provided with Google. A user may login with using their Google account and you can get some users information like email and profile URL and the full name. For instance, if I click here, I'm going to delete the Google consent where I can log in. Then if I click here, I'll be logged in. And I'll be directed to the home page here. Welcome page. Because the login process have been successful. And here once a user login, you can get some information like username, password, and their given names, and you can use in your website or you can save in your database. I started by creating a simple project, and I'm running ZAMP in my computer. I'll create a new directory here, and this directory I'm going to rename it Login. Two. and inside this directory I'm going to create a file a PHP file and I will call it index.php okay sorry it is an index.php not a PHP file And you can see I'm going to delete this one because I mistaken type to PHP and I'm going to open the project in my ID I installed the PHP storm and you can open your development environment for development purpose here I'm going to open it in the PHP storm and my PHP storm have been started and in our project directory in the home directory there is an index.php file and I'll put some PHP code here Because you are going to use the Google authentication algorithm, we need to install Google Client API. To install Google Client API, you have to run this command in your project directory. Now I'm entering my project directory and into this command compose install. Compose require Google. API client then you have to put the version here 2.0.2 make sure of internet connection once you are running this for the first time in your computer but because I believe you have run this command you can see the 
Google Client API have been installed in my project directory. When I open Morocco now, you can see nothing because we don't have coded our index.php file. I assume you know how to configure an Apache web server and that's why I only show you how to get it on the localhost. Everything in the background is up to you. And here I'm going to create a support for the login form. And this form is created in HTML. And if you know how to generate this form, you can skip this step because it is a normal HTML and I use Tailwind CSS as the CSS. That's why I put here the on the classes. I put just an image to define a Google login that will be shown as a button for login with Google here. Now after we have to get a credential file and the video on how to get a credential file you can you can find the link in the description because there is a tutorial on how to get this file and a long tutorial that I skipped for for second time and I copy this file and I rename credentials.json and this file I'm going to include it in my client because in order to exclude a client request we have to include this file and now I'm going to instantiate the client the Google client and I'll name this client Google client here When you run this B result in line, you can see you can make these errors like this one class Google current not found in your file. This is because the class is not defined in our index.php file. In order for it to be defined, you have to require an external class that you have been downloaded as a dependence in our project that is from the Google API and we have to include a vendor auto load for that we load the automatic class is defined with the compose here now we are going to configure the client with some arguments let's start with a session and I store the access token in the session because once a user login I'll get the session the access token and this access token will be required to get user info and I will stay I store in the session and here is a header to redirect but I will not show you how to redirect our website to a home page but I will print on a hello web to show that a user have been successful logged in. As if the session available is contain nothing other than access token then We have to call. We have to call a login. That is, we have to redirect to the login, the Google login consent. Here, we have to set an application name. You can you can check this in your project. I will put this name, for example. And here, I will put the. I have to add the scope. We have to specify the scopes, and this scope must be specified 
in array format. If you specify like what I specified here, you are going to get an error, or one of them will be selected because a string is not required, only a, an array string is required. Now we have to put here the configuration file that we downloaded, and, and I told you to watch the if you don't know how to generate this credential file. I created a video and the link is in the description how to generate this credential file for Google authentication. Now we have to go and try and catch method because if a file is not found and an exception will be sold and we are going to catch this exception and we will say something like not found. Let's say a file not found exception. But what if a file is present? Now our current will be configured with this argument. And this credential file will contain the current ID and current secret science um, as the information. Related to your project. Here I'll set some arguments outside this trial cache. I can put here the set prompt, the set account, and the cosine screen. We have to specify the access type. If you say offline, then the access token will be valid for a long time. But if you don't specify this one, the access token will expire immediately. Now we are going to generate the URL that is when a user is not logged in and when there is no session variable of type access token, then we redirect or we send the to this URL for a login purpose and this URL is created using the method this defined create you create house URL of the client. Now I'll pass the URL here URL now I'll save it and if I try to refresh this button, I've been configured with a URL as you can see at the bottom here, a URL 31. If I click now, I'm being able to get the login consent screen, this one, as we specify the consent screen. And we have been able to login, but the, we, after the success login, we get the code. This code is not used to our request but what we are going to use is an access token then how we get this access token we use this code to exchange with access token now we are going to get this code in the get variable Okay, and we are going to get this, let's say, if it's set in the post array, because this is this is not a post, it is a get. If the get array is set with an index code, then we are going to assign this 
valve into the code valve and how we are we are going to get the access token I define an access token here and this value we assign with the we call the method inside the client this one say client to switch access token with our authentication code and we pass the code here now this line will return the okay it, it say we have not defined let us move this extension at the top and now our access token will be stored in this variable and I'm going to install it in the session array variables and with this access token index uh, what if the session in the session variable there is a value with key access token nothing because we have not implemented so now we are going to say here something if if there is something in our session code with index access token we are going to say something here we are going to assess that access token in our session as you can see we are logged in it means there is a variable there is an element in the session and we are going to say to get this session and we assign it to the client so that will be, the client will be called with this access token okay you have to ensure that once you call information once you get you want to get the service with this current you have to put a, an argument of type access token without access token then you are going to get nothing you're going to get a null so now because we have an access token you can store this access token in a proper place so that we can use it to access user info in order to get user info we have to create a service and this service will be of type google or house 2 google service or house 2 and we pass it with the client and this google or house 2 service will be used to get user info Another thing to understand my friend here is that an access token come with a refresh token and this refresh token will be used to get a new access token once an access token expires and you can see I have been able to print the full name of a user as using a get name I can also print the picture as you can see this one this is a URL that return a picture. 